Hey guys, good morning. Hope you're off to a great day so far. I know it's been a really busy weekend, and one of the things that we've done on Smarter News in the past has been a segment called Coffee Talk, where every morning we get together for a cup of coffee and I give you a little uh, news update, sometimes three things I think you should know to start off your week. We had to put that segment on a brief hiatus because I had a third baby. <laughs> but after seeing the news over the weekend, I thought it would be worthwhile for us to connect a little bit this morning and just briefly talk about three things that I think are really important for you to know as you start off another week. Obviously, it's been a very busy weekend. Let's not uh, just state the obvious. Here's a couple things I think you should know about. The first being that it's been exactly a week since the uh, death of George Floyd in police custody in Minneapolis. So this story is a quickly moving, developing story. And I think just knowing that it's been just a week is important because this story has gone from a local story in Minneapolis quickly to a national story and now a global story. One of the things you should know is that the police officer who was kneeling on George Floyd during his arrest has been charged with murder, and there were early reports that he would appear in court today. That's not going to happen. Now the reports indicate that it'll be another week before we see this officer in court. You should also know that the additional officers that were part of the arrest that were fired the next day uh, after the video surfaced of the arrest and the news of George Floyd's death, they have not been charged, but there is an anticipation that a charge could be coming. So that's something to watch for this week. Uh, the second thing you should know has to do with these reports about outsiders as part of protests in different cities. I'm sure you've seen this, haven't you, online? There's been a series of different reports about this. I just want to focus on something that happened in Minneapolis over the weekend that I think is worth your time. In Minneapolis on Saturday, the governor and the mayor, uh, um, the governor of the state of Minnesota and the, the mayor of Minneapolis talked about outsiders being a predominant part of the arrests uh, as part of the protests or riots or looting in reaction to uh, the death of George Floyd. And a local news agency, a local news station, looked at the arrest records. And by the way, the reports of these outsiders being part of the protests and part of the looting went all the way to the president of the United States who also echoed what the governor of Minnesota said, saying that 80% of the arrests were outsiders. Well, a local news station looked into the arrest records, and for that finite period from Friday to Saturday, most of the arrests were actually of local people. So I only share this story just in case you saw those headlines like I did, and that kind of pushed me in a different direction, wondering what this is all about. You should just know that there's some lack of clarity. Uh, there's a lot of reports about outsiders, whether it's far right elements or far left elements that are a part of these protests proceed cautiously with these reports, the arrest uh, records will tell us something. And the Associated Press reported this morning that we're seeing more than 4,000 arrests nationwide in relation to the protests slash looting slash riots that have come in the aftermath of uh, the, uh, the, um, the death of George Floyd. Last thing you should know, and I'm sure you've seen this as well, is that different states, the governors have activated their national guards. and. One of the questions I had is, well, where's the federal government? You know, we're seeing a lot of people hurting. We're seeing a lot of people um, with damage to their property and a lot of people physically injured. So, you know, where where's the Calvary? <laughs> who, who, who actually can help in these situations? And one of the things that I learned over the weekend is that the National Guard really has to be activated by the state. The governor of a state can activate the National Guard only in extraordinarily rare circumstances. I mean, we're talking very rare. Can the President of the United States send in the National Guard to a state? And that has to do with the separation of power between the federal and the state government. So that's one of the reasons why you're seeing that. Um, something definitely to watch as we're seeing more states governors have to activate the National Guard in light of the rioting and looting that is happening. So curious your questions and your thoughts about this story. How can we help during this time provide more clarity and facts? Please let us know and let us know as well if you like these Coffee Talk segments because maybe they have to come out of hiatus <laughs> so we can provide a little bit of a service for you that is uh, fact-based and nonpartisan during this really tumultuous time. I had a friend last night that was writing me about something related to the news and I said, you know, it's a really tough news cycle. 
that I thought, it's actually a really tough life cycle <laughs> that I think we're all in right now. So uh, we definitely have to have compassion for each other during this time and we wanna help. Final little bit of COVID related news. I just wanna throw in there because I saw this late last night in Bloomberg and I thought, hey, this is something important to know. Remember, there's all this talk about vaccine development Oxford University and AstraZeneca, which is a major pharmaceutical company, they've gone in through with their vaccine and initial trial. Well, they're going to be launching a second human trial that's going to start in June. And what's significant about this is that reports indicate they're going to include children in this vaccine trial. This is important because, you know, when vaccines are approved, they may not be uh, approved or extensively tested on children just for ethic, eth ethical concerns. So, this will be interesting to watch and something just to be aware of. So let us know what you'd like to hear more of. We look forward to hearing from you guys. You can always direct message us on social media or you can email us, hello at Smart News. Hope you have a great week. Let us know how we can help.